And so the ways in which we pay attention matter deeply. They produce the realities uh, that we're able to see and live and interpret. So our methods enable us. They create how it is that we see what we're able to see, how we're able to feel what we feel, um, and what it is that we're actually paying attention to. So um, in this sense, ideas are not just static. They're not sitting there. They're made through our methods and our orientations with others. Um, knowledge is made. Um, it's situated in the intersections of research, writing, and pedagogy that enable ideas to live um, and thus uh, curriculum to live. Um, so a curriculum that is made, transforms, uh, it becomes as we grow deeper into the questions that we're asking and the puzzles that we're trying to figure out, um, the puzzles that we're trying to live inside and inhabit, uh, but that we might never solve. And so returning to the BC Early Learning Framework, um, on page 18, they're discussing the role of the educator as a co-researcher with children. Um, and they say that educators collaborate with children and their families as partners in research. And this means educators are continually observing, listening, and experimenting with an openness to the unexpected. The role of the educator has shifted away from being a transmitter of knowledge toward being a collaborator who creates conditions so that children can invent, investigate, build theories, and learn. Um, and this is not, when they say observation, this is not observation from an objective sense. We're not seeking to remove ourselves from the experience. Um, and I encourage you to attend to the situatedness um, of the role of the educator in your papers. Um, educators are not passive observers of, of experience. We are co-researchers with children. We're studying alongside and figuring out, proposing ideas with. Um, so this research is not about or even only for children. This is research with children, which is radically different. Um, so we aren't proposing, our, sorry, we aren't providing um, interesting or beautiful situations for children to explore and study on their own, but rather we're creating these situations and these conditions where we're active in the wondering as well, um, which is why we need to be asking questions that deeply matter to us. Um, we're writing from a situated perspective that's lived, that's felt in the moment, and we're responding with pedagogical decisions that enable us as well as educators um, to think more about the problems that we're puzzled by. So in this course, we've been thinking about how it is that we do this, uh, with what orientations to research, and with what pedagogic value. Um, and with that, what methods enable this kind of ongoing and generative uh, emergence of ideas with intention? Um, so there, these are the dispositions to research that you'll be putting to work in your grad projects. Uh, but in your grad projects, you'll be working with much more longevity in the work with others. Um, you'll be working in projects that are ongoing and sustained, where curriculum is made over time, um, thinking through the complexity of these uh, research questions and the ideas that emerge uh, when you encounter them in situations with others. And you'll be thinking about um, situations that might help you to think more about the questions uh, and the problems that you're encountering to figure out. For example, in your inquiry projects, um, if you were thinking about time or if you were thinking about hospitality or stories, um, you came with an idea in your proposals about what would be a particular context or situation that might help you to think even more about this topic, that might help you to enhance it um, and really get inside it. Uh, and this is something that you'll be continuing to do in your grad projects, but with much more depth and with much more um, sustained attention. So where these ideas that have been sort of subtly emerging in this course will be more fully deepened and richened in, uh, in your grad projects. So kind of shifting gears uh, again to your final papers, um, sorry, that are actually due on December 12th. Um, 
we talked about this last week, but I'll just go over them again. You're going to be thinking about what are the concerns of hermeneutic phenomenological human research? What matters uh, to this research orientation? What is it oriented towards and why and what way? Um, what are its aims and intentions? What does it seek to do or find out? And for what purpose? Uh, and this is the pedagogical sense that will come in here. Um, and what are the processes of researching like? And you can speak to this from your inquiry projects if you want to include examples. What's that process of researching with others uh, in a lived experience like? What does it require of the teacher researcher? And some suggestions, um, as I already said last week, but just to bring forth uh, again in case some of you missed it. Um, as you're thinking about writing your paper, it might be helpful to uh, refer to the first uh, chapter of Van Manen, pages 8 to 13, um, as he discusses uh, several qualities of phenomenological research. Um, you also could decide to frame your paper around some of these qualities. For example, you could discuss how the study of lived experience begins in the life world and it returns to the life world. Uh, that it's the practice of thoughtfulness, uh, of lived experience, um, of questions that matter because we live them. Um, it means by being engaged in research for meaning, trying to find the meaning of things. It's not just describing what happened, but rather you're searching for emerging ideas, emerging meanings um, that matter to you pedagogically. And also you can consider how it's a poeticizing activity and that you're not searching for the literal, you're not searching for facts or answers to re your research questions, but rather you're paying attention to the how of things. How is something lived? What are the intimacies of living something? Um, and what does that do um, to your, your um, pedagogical life? Um, you could enrich your discussion by drawing on ideas and examples from uh, some of the articles or from personal experiences from the course. And I do encourage you to utilize other articles um, to help you contextualize uh, the Van Manen text within some of the course ideas. So in your virtual collaboratory groups this week, you're going to be arriving with a rough draft or an outline of your papers um, to help uh, you to think collectively together about how, um, how your ideas are beginning to form. So please do email a working draft or outline to your of your paper to your group members. Um, and as a group, read each paper out loud and consider some of the following questions. Um, firstly, consider the first, uh, these two slides, thinking about, you know, the outline of the paper, thinking about um, how is hermeneutic phenomenological research lived, what is it orient to, oriented towards, some of these um, conceptual questions. And then together, this is also a great opportunity to think more about um, about the structure and formatting and quality of the actual written paper. Um, so consider, is the thesis statement of this paper clearly identifiable? Does the paper support the thesis statement or key focus? So in your first introduction, the last paragraph of the introduction will always have a statement that kind of synthesizes what is this paper about and what are you going to do in this paper? Um, so it should really clearly out uh, sorry, lay out exactly what it is that you're going to do in the paper. And this really helps the reader in terms of following your train of thought and where your ideas are going. So that whatever you write in your paper should be reflected in that thesis statement very concisely. Um, are there areas of the paper that are hard to understand? Sometimes it really helps to have somebody else read it even out loud so that you can notice um, what are the areas that may not make sense because if you're reading it yourself over and over and over again, sometimes you don't notice because it's coming from your own <laughs> perspective. Um, so it's good to have another reader there for you. Does this paper follow APA formatting and referencing? Um, are there improper sentences? Are there grammar issues? Or are there words that repeat? Um, sometimes, again, we don't notice that in our own writing that we use, tend to use some of the same language over and over again. 
Um, what are areas of the paper that are inspiring? What is curious? What is provocative? What is helping you to think more about the nuances of phenomenological research with others in this particular context? Uh, so that's it for this week, everybody. Um, it's a really short lecture, but I just want to make sure that um, you're not feeling overwhelmed and that you um, have enough space this week to really um, think through your final assignments together collectively in your virtual collaboratories. Um, and if you need, please do join me on Thursday. I'll be here. Um, and if you want to beforehand, you can email me um, a working draft or um, an outline if you want me to take a look at it, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, and then we could discuss it on Thursday. But um, if you do want me to look at your work, um, it's helpful if you email it to me beforehand, even if it's at least a couple hours, so that I have some time to take a look um, so you're not waiting for me to read it on the spot <laughs> on Zoom. Um, so yeah, that's it, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for all of your generative ideas and generosity and taking up some of these uh, complex topics uh, that this course offers. Um, and I'm really excited to see how you take up uh, this work in your grad projects and in your practice. Uh, and if you have any feedback for me, uh, anything that you think uh, in the future would be helpful knowing moving forward and teaching this course, I'm totally receptive to your feedback. Um, and yeah, again, if you need any support with your final assignments or have any questions, please do feel free to send me an email as well. Wishing you all wellness and health and safety and joy <laughs> as we wrap up the term. Thanks, everybody. Take care.